Hi, welcome. Simon here, and hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on an Acer Predator. This is the Triton 500 SE. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is to get yourself a Torx screwdriver. Let me see if it's a T8. So you'll be using a T8 Torx screwdriver to remove the screws here. In this teardown, I'm going to show you how to remove the hard drive, maybe remove the battery, changing out the RAM. So you get to see all that process in this video. Again, I'm using a T8, which is the Torque 8 screwdriver. We need to remove all the screws here and get into the back to remove the back cover. It looks like the screws are all the same sizes so far. Yeah, it does look like all the same sizes. So it is okay to mix match the screws if you happen to had it mix match earlier. Okay, once you have removed all the screws, what I like to do is to get a metal prying tool, go in between that little gap right there. And the next step is to use a plastic prying tool so that I do not make a scratch on the laptop. Just kind of run across the line here and separate the back cover by removing it straight up. Here is the internal part of the computer. You can see that the entire layout of the motherboard is here. The CPU fans are all here. There are three of them in total. This is your Wi-Fi card. And this is the laptop battery. All right, so let's go ahead and peel this tape off. This tape is holding down to the connector. Peel it off and reuse the tape. So I'm going to stick it back here. Same for this, stick it back here. What I like to do is to pull the connector down. So you, all you have to do is just slide this connector down towards the body. That is to disconnect the battery. Once you have done the process, go ahead and flip the, the clipper. There are two clippers here, one for the keyboard lighting, and this is probably for the trackpad. And this clipper here is for the motherboard. Open up the clipper and slide the cable down towards your body. <clears throat> and do the same for this one here. Open up the clipper and slide it down. You're going to pay attention to the Wi-Fi. There are two cables. The black is on the top matching the number two and the white is at the bottom matching number one. To remove it, you just simply lift it straight up. Get yourself a Phillips screwdriver and go ahead and remove that Wi-Fi card. You can slide a Wi-Fi card to your right and you remove it. This is the speaker for your left. All you have to do is slide the connector down. This is the speaker on the right. Slide it down towards your body. Just remove them. Okay, so the next step is to disconnect the CPU fan. That is the CPU fan here on the left. Push the connector away from your body. And there's one here. I'm going to just slide it away from my body. So that's how you remove it. And there's one cable here. Open up the clipper and remove the, the flex cable to your right. Okay. Once you have done with that process, the next step is to go ahead and disconnect the LCD cable. But before you do that, there's a slight metal clipper here. You need to pop it up and slide the cable away from your body and peel it back. So it's the double-sided tape taping down the heat sink and the CPU fan. Just peel it backwards. All right. Once we have done with all that process, what I like to do is start removing the screws. 
try to make sure that you might want to uh, take a picture before you remove the screws or maybe do a little drawing there are going to be three screws here one two and three holding down the cpu fan it looks like the cpu fan doesn't come off that means the heatsink is holding it on the other side of it so we need to probably remove the entire heatsink altogether with the motherboard okay so there's one here There's one here, one here at the bottom, one here on the left. I hope it's all the cable for the motherboard and see if it actually pops up. Okay, so the entire motherboard, the entire motherboard is coming off. I just like to know what is stuck here. Okay, so there's a little stuck coming from the headphones. So the best is to remove the battery and give it some room for that headphones to come off easily. So two screws holding down the battery, lift it off, and you can remove the motherboard easily, like so. Okay. Here you can see that the RAM is on this side. They're actually on the other side of the motherboard, which is a little bit weird, but it is what it is so let me sit it down here for a second I need to move the battery here is blocking my way now let me just kind of quickly show it to you what you're looking at at the moment and you can see that the entire heatsink is covered up here on the top to remove it you just have to remove one two three four five six screws i believe yep six screws and then the heatsink will just come right off unfortunately the way they design it's not a flaw but the the way they design is the cpu fan is attached to the heatsink you cannot remove just this maybe i'm wrong you might be able to remove it It looks like it's attached to it, but at the same time, it may be able to remove it. I'm not going to do it because I do not have a replacement for the CPU fan. I might break it and I can't have a replacement on time. So you see the screws here? If you guys remove the screw and this CPU fan might be able to pop out on the other side of it, then you can just buy this replacement um, just the top. Most of the computer nowadays, what I'm trying to say is, they have the heat sink and the CPU fan attached together. So if one CPU fan goes out, you would have to replace the whole, the entire heat sink. So I think which is kind of like a, a waste and heat sink is built by a copper. So the copper is easily, you know, distribute the heat and they are expensive. So anyway, this is a good time where you want to come and clean up all your stuff. You can see that the, uh, all this little dust and hair, fur hair, animal hair, I got stuck. So go ahead and clean it up since you already opened up the computer. And here is the RAM. So the RAM runs on a DDR4. To remove the RAM, all you have to do is to push the two clipper on the side, right? The two metal clipper on the side, push it. When it opens like this, the RAM will just pop up at 45 degree angle. And you can just remove and get a replacement here the ram is a eight gigabytes and it run on a pc4 you can see it's a pc4 that means it's a ddr4 ram so this is a ddr4 ram eight and eight that is 16 total eight and eight so you can do 16 16 and it goes up to 32 gigs of ram my goal for today is to remove the ssd drive 
Here I have the M.2. This is the M.2 NVMe SSD drive. So this SSD drive, I believe has a problem with it. I'd be getting a lot of blue screen and also was not able to um, finish up the reset on the Windows 11. So if you're getting this error message, well, I'm getting it, then more likely it's coming from the hard drive. Okay, so this is the one terabyte hard drive. SSD, I'll be doing a replacement of this. Okay. This is the replacement of one terabyte I got. Um, if you're not sure where to buy them, what I'll do is I'll link down in the description below. You can check it out from Amazon or eBay. We can find a replacement. Um, I'll be using a crucial one terabyte M.2 SSD. They do come with the screw. You might want to save the screw for future use, but I'll be reusing the same screw that I removed earlier. So slide it in to your left at 45 degree angle. And that is the original screw. I'm going to go back in there. Okay, and this is the, uh, the bad SSD drive. Okay, what I like to do is to reinstall everything back together. And again, if you're curious what this is, this little yellow thing is a battery. That is a CMOS battery that's holding down the uh, the BIOS. Oh yeah, so let me go ahead and kind of tell you something about the keyboard. If you have a bad keyboard, uh, if your keyboard is, you know, you spill something on the keyboard and some of the keys are not working, you would have to replace the entire full assembly keyboard. What happened is that the keyboard is not replaceable. You can see that the plastic is not screwed in. It is actually punched down by the manufacturer uh, using the plastic punching tool. So that things you cannot remove. And once you remove, you can't stick it back in. So uh, unfortunately, you have to replace the entire full keyboard. All right, putting back in together, you want to make sure that this cable is going to go in between. It comes out from this little hole here uh, because that is where the this what is supposed to go in okay so i'm going to match that headphone jack on the right making sure that it gets in first and this little guy here i need you to come out the surface not in there so go ahead and clip you in closing down the motherboard and making sure that the speaker cable is sitting on top of it making sure the rest of other cables like the trackpad keyboard keyboard lighting cable and whatever that is the clicker goes on top of it cpu fan cpu fan great so we have all the cables that we need is sitting above the motherboard where we can install in just a second All right, so we are good here. Uh, what I like to do is quickly have the screws going back into the computer before I forgot where they are supposed to go to. Okay, once I have that installed, the next is the CPU fan. Obviously, this computer here has a very little screws holding down the entire motherboard, to be honest with you. Some of the com company or computers, they have like gazillion of screws holding down the computer. But this is very easy. Only a few screws and that's it. Okay, let's connect the CPU fan. Slide it down slide it down make sure the clipper is open have this little cable push all the way in and then clip it down clipper open open slide that flex cable in clip it down same goes with this
slide it in, clip it down, keyboard, slide it in, push it down, and last but not least, the final cable. Okay, making sure the speaker is go back in as well, both sides. And now you can have the battery that go back on top of it. Okay, have the Wi-Fi. Slide it into your left from an angle. Have the two cables sitting on top of it. That one screw goes back in it. All right, the black cable goes to the top. Again, you just have to align them properly. There's the, they are just like Lego. Making sure that the circle goes on top of it. And then close it down. Okay. And the next step is to reconnect the battery. Slide it in. And remember the tape that we peel. I'm just going to reuse the tape again. And then close it down, making sure that the cable stays solid. Two screws holding back the battery. And then this cable here comes back down. Slide it in. and then close it with that clipper. Okay, now we can have the cover to go back on top of it. And the next step is to install the windows. All right, so again, um, because the hard drive is brand new, it doesn't have any Windows operating system on it so the hard drive will not boot to windows what you need to do is you need to get yourself a window installer uh, you can either download it from microsoft website or you can buy one of this meaning that this is the usb windows installer that has a license key on it um, you can reinstall the windows using the usb installer that comes with in the computer uh, in this box again i'll list it down in the uh, description down below uh, you can get it through either Amazon or eBay and um, and then do a fresh install Windows on the computer and download all the drivers making sure that you have updated drivers for your graphics for your CPU and whatnot and that's pretty much it all right so again um, this video is just strictly do a teardown a replacement of my M.2 drive but if you're interested to know how to do the Windows installation, go check the link. I mean, go check my channel. I have it a video strictly just for the uh, Windows installation setup. OK, thanks for watching. And again, um, I really appreciate that if you if you if you want to show appreciation on my on my video, uh, you can do the super thanks on YouTube. Super thanks allow you to donate, uh, show your appreciation. As a content creator here and um yeah thanks for watching and make sure you smash the like button and until next time thank you bye now